I, uh, I've just admitted uh, our waiting room participants, so they are joining now. Hi, good morning, everybody. We're just going to give uh, participants a few more minutes to come in because I see that there's some more people in the waiting room. So a couple of minutes grace before we get started. Hope everyone had a good weekend. All right, I think we get started. I think people will probably continue to roll in in the next few minutes. Um, full disclosure, because this is <laughs> life in uh, social distancing, I am holding my dog right now so that she doesn't chew my charger cable. <laughs> uh, I'm Ramona Pringle. I'm the director of the Creative Innovation Studio at FCAD at Ryerson University. And um, this is our first Communities Create workshop. The goal of Communities Create is to support the creative community through micro grants for independent artists who are leading these amazing sessions. We've got a ton of amazing sessions. If you haven't seen the full calendar yet, which is just getting published as we talk, um, it's next week, Toronto Public Library with a session on podcasting. The week after that is Second City with a comedy session. There's comedies, on, there's um, sessions coming up on graphic novel development, on um, music, on screenwriting. There's so many great sessions with so many great partners and it's really, really exciting that we can offer this. Uh, the goal is to help people express how they're feeling through creative output. And that's why we've got all of this, these different media. We hope that some of you will come every week and join in all the sessions repeatedly, uh, or else, you know, there's there might be some that call to you. Certainly, if how you feel comfortable expressing yourself is through comedy, maybe that's something uh, you're more comfortable with than music. But I think there's a great opportunity to develop your skills, to learn something new, to be part of something that's interactive. So I'm gonna talk through a little bit about the format. Um, as well this morning, um, but to, to really be able to express how we're feeling. I, I was reading in The Atlantic last week, there was an article on um, all of our Zoom calls and all of our Zoom calls would ask, uh, start with the same question, which is, how are you? But of course we launch into our conversations, we don't really have time. And it's sort of out of habit that we ask it. It's also, you know, we mean it. We are genuinely curious how others are feeling, but we don't really have the time or the tool set or the capacity or the sort of infrastructure for lack of a better word to, to really explain how we're feeling when nearly every aspect of our lives right now has been disrupted in one way or another. I think we're all dealing with anxiety, with worry, with grief, um, if for nothing else, for the world as it used to be. So that's really why we're doing this. Um, I'm so excited to see so many of you participating this morning. Uh, today's workshop is on creating photo, photo diaries. We're gonna be using still imagery to create a narrative about life in isolation. And so it's great to see so many different kinds of people, so many different ages here, because the goal is for you to be able to tell your own stories without words. We did a test session of this last week and I can tell you, you are in for a really, really wonderful workshop. I had moments of delight and I know I'm going to again today, even though I've been through it once. Uh, a few ground rules just before we get started. The first one is you will see um, on screen the Communities Create thumbnail. For the optimal experience, pin that, uh, pin that one. You can just see in the top right corner, you have the, the ability to pin uh, the video. So pin the video for Communities Create. Um, 
somebody wants to say hello, my little co-host here. Uh, the next thing I'd like to say is try all the exercises yourself. So Laurence is going to lead you through three small exercises. Then she'll give you time to do all of them. I strongly encourage you to try them out. There is time. You can, you know, repeat them afterwards this week, but really uh, to jump in and just give things a try is the whole point of this. This is, as we were envisioning it, Peloton meets Art Attack in that it's real time and it is something that you can be doing alongside the host, alongside the host artist. It's not a YouTube tutorial where you sort of are watching along and thinking you'll do it later on. It is real time, live and interactive. Um, use the chat inside Zoom if you've got any questions or if you've got any comments. We will be um, taking three pauses, as I was mentioning, for you to be able to try things yourself. And when we take those pauses, we'll be throwing to people who are participating to be able to ask their questions. You can also ask questions during those little breaks that are creation breaks. Um, finally, as we're going, share your work. So if you're taking photos as we go, use the community's create hashtag and throw your examples up on social media. You can let us know where you've put them, let's say on Twitter or on Instagram, um, so that we know where to look and so that Laurence can be looking for them as well as we're going. But if you're um, making stuff, if you're creating throughout the session, use that community's create hashtag and post them online so that we can talk about them as well. Uh, finally, your microphone will be muted and moderators will unmute you if you have questions to ask. Um, any audio, including what you say, is archived and recorded. Finally, your video is controlled by you. It is uh, viewable by other uh, participants. It's not being recorded. So if you want to turn your video off, you can, but if you want to engage with everybody um, and sort of let everyone else who's on the call see yourself, you're welcome to leave it on. That's totally up to you. Now, as I was saying, I'm going to put the puppy down. Hold on. Um, as I was saying, uh, this is live and interactive, which means there's a lot of people in addition to Laurence, who's today's artist, who we'll introduce in a moment, who are on um, this Zoom call or in this Zoom conference. Uh, the first of which is Diana Breacher, who I want to introduce. She is heading up our mental health task force. So Diane, I'm going to throw it over to you. One of the reasons we're doing this is to give people a creative outlet for their emotions. Um, I'd love for you to just tell us a little bit more about your role in Communities Create. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ramona. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm delighted to be here. Um, essentially, my role is to uh, support uh, folks if you're going through uh, something going on right now that's being triggered by the workshop for whatever reason. And I've invited um, one of our PhD students at Ryerson, uh, Rachel, who's here. Why don't you raise your hand, hey, Rachel, um, who's also going to be available to respond to um, a chat that you put out. So I'm Diana. She's Rachel. If something's going on, you want to connect with us, uh, we're going to be <clears throat> noted, reading the chat and we'll respond to you individually if something comes up. And we're going to be around after the workshop for about 15 minutes to kind of direct for re to resources if um, you're interested in kind of talking with someone on a longer uh, basis. So we're just here kind of as a bit of a safety net just in case something gets triggered and you want to talk. Thanks, Ramona. Thanks, Diana. Uh, next, I'm going to pass things over to Amelia King. Amelia King is one of my wonderful colleagues at Ryerson. She is the director of the Transmedia Zone, the host for this week's workshop. Uh, so Amelia, I'd love to hear from you why the Transmedia Zone wanted to get involved in Communities Create, why uh, you, um, or, or, and, and, I, and I guess, why Laurent? So a few words about the Transmedia Zone and uh, an introduction for this week's workshop. Absolutely. Thanks, Ramona. Hi, everyone. So for those of you who do not know, the Transmedia Zone is Ryerson's Media Innovation Incubator. Uh, and that means we support projects that are really pushing the boundaries of storytelling through both narrative and technology. And we know that storytelling is really what makes us human. And it feels like right now we need storytelling more than ever. So this just felt like such a natural collaboration for us. We're so excited to have nominated Laurence Boutéroc to lead this session. Um, Laurence is an award-winning photographer who's currently pursuing her PhD, and she's reflecting all about the ways that we create images. So we, we love Laurence. She was the Transmedia Zone's first artist in residence, and truly there is no one better to kick off these sessions. And you'll see what Laurence does so well is she conveys complex stories through the lens, and she's going to share some of that with you. 
Um, and I don't know what's more complex than our feelings right now during this uh, pandemic. So Laurence, I'd love to throw it over to you to tell us a little bit about your experience and your background. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Lawrence. Uh, you can call me, you know, Lawrence or Laurence or Larry. I'm originally from Montreal. You'll probably notice um, my accent comes through once in a while. Can't pronounce H's for the life of me. Uh, but I've been a photographer for the past uh, roughly a decade, uh, a time during which I mostly focused on uh, environmental issues and uh, Indigenous rights. So this current period has been a big shift for me in my practice uh, because a lot of the work that I usually do, which involves going to communities and spending a lot of time with them, I can no longer do at this point. Uh, so I've had to shift my practice kind of inside and inwards, which is a little bit uh, challenging at times for me. So I'll be sharing a little bit of kind of the tips that I've used to um, kind of get me over a little bit of my creative block at the beginning. That's great. And I think, um, I think it's especially interesting, you know, we chose photography as the first session because it feels like it's a great way in that right now it can be hard to find exactly the words, especially when the way we feel changes throughout the day, you may be feeling fine in the morning, especially when it's a sunny day. And by the evening, once you've consumed all the news and scrolled all the feeds, you're feeling, uh, you know, something different entirely and going through so many different emotions in a given day. So to be able to start off this, this journey that we're on with Community Create through imagery felt like a really natural place. I'd love your thoughts on the role of creativity or especially your creative output when it comes to dealing with crisis. Yeah, it's been very interesting uh, lately for me uh, to think about the role that photography plays in kind of um, enabling me daily to find ways to express my feelings. Um, I mentioned I often tell the stories of others, so I sometimes tend not to be that great at communicating my own. Um, and photography has become this tool uh, in the past few days for that. You will see later in the workshop um, I have been transferring onto my cat. So my cat is like acting as a stand-in for how I'm feeling. And I don't think I could really do that with word. Using photography and taking pictures of the cat is definitely the best way I found to kind of move through. And then I share them on Instagram and I'm seeing the feedback sometimes from uh, some of the people that follow me, friends and loved ones, uh, and seeing that they're feeling similar emotions. Uh, also, they've been offering kind of tools once in a while, um, podcasts to listen to or, you know, yoga channels to follow. Um, so it's been great in that respect as well. Well, let's begin. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so by all means, at any time, feel free to ask questions in the chat box. Um, I know some of our uh, mediators that are also on this call will be going through and making sure that um, we have time throughout the workshops where I can uh, address some of those questions. They can be questions about uh, my experience or my practice. Uh, they can also be questions, obviously, about the material that we're going to cover. Uh, in this regards, I have to say, you know, this is a pretty kind of like basic low barrier to entry workshop. So if you're already someone quite familiar with photography and you have some tips and skills that you want to share with others, also use the chat to do so. Um, it's really a space for us to exchange. Um, so I'm really hoping that you'll also like kind of communicate with one another as much as I'm um, kind of sharing what I know. The other thing, just to kind of like reiterate how the workshop is going to go, I'm going to be uh, presenting three different kind of genres of photography. Those are going to be still lives, portraiture, and documentary. And with each, I'm going to also introduce an aesthetic concern, an aesthetic decision that you get that will then allow you to emphasize the message of these images. And after each portion, so for instance, still life is spared um, with kind of color, um, you'll get about five minutes to try it out. So to you know, get up from your chairs, go around your house, um, take a picture to um, come back to it. And if during that time you have questions, again, 
you're, um, this will be a good time for us to kind of chat about that. Uh, so everybody good? Can give me a little thumbs up, ready to go. <laughs> um, so first of, we'll go with, we'll start, you know, with something that's fairly simple, still lifes. And the reason why I start with still life is because, well, obviously objects are incredibly patient as we learn ropes. Uh, you're not dealing with a four-year-old child that, you know, wants to run around uh, as you're trying to figure out how to light the photograph. So really think, and also because objects can actually be great stand-ins for our emotions. Um, you know, if you look around your house, and this is what I did when I kind of was, you know, thinking through still lives, I was thinking about some of the objects maybe that, you know, spoke to how I felt. I have a lot of like little trinkets like this one, um, which are souvenirs from trips, um, you know, and really speak to my longing for the, for travel, usually um, May is a period where I go on road trips. Um, and so there's, here's another object that kind of speaks to that. I have a little minivan. It's, it's unfortunately not a reproduction of my actual camper van, but um, <laughs> mine is not that cool. Um, but you, you know, there's objects like that around us um, that can speak to some of the things we long for, but also some emotions. So for in instance, like if I show you a blanket, like this lovely one, um, you know, what do you think of? Perhaps you think of, you know, warmth and comfort and safety. Um, and so this object could stand in for that. On the other hand, if I show you, you know, a cactus, which has seen better days, um, you know, the emotions that it may speak to are a little bit different. So here you're having, you know, first thought is obviously prickly, um, given that it's unfortunately, um, not too healthy, that might also speak to kind of that aspects of things. So really objects are great stand-ins. Um, they also surround us at all times. Um, and one of the, so when I decided to do objects, I actually decided not to use any of these, but to actually use food. Still lifes are great for food. So you're seeing some of my pantry items here. Um, and thought, okay, I'll do little, you know, scenes with food. But in order to do that, I also decided to really pay attention to one thing, which is color. So the color schemes that you have in photographs will really, really heighten certain messages. I have a slide of some images I took um, in this past week. Uh, so one of which is here, you can see a lot of these items, super vivid colors. So that's a lot more playful, you know, it's, it's exuberant, it's ecstatic, it's enthusiastic. Those are what kind of the emotion that that image carries. On the other hand, if I go for more pastel tones, um, which you'll see in the next slide, yeah, right there, um, this is a lot more calming, a lot more appeasing. So maybe like food is the moment in the day where you kind of like are able to like go into and um, really just calm yourself down. Um, or, and that happens to me off, quite often, you know, some food can also be just something that, you know, is what you do because you, you, you have to eat, you know, and it's a, a bit more clinical. So in that case, you can go for, you know, a stark white background, for instance. Um, and in that case, you know, it has kind of more of that cold feeling and is a lot less warm. Um, and if it's something very, you know, for you, very serious, if it's a moment of introspection and all of that, you can also go for, you know, a more like rich black background. Um, so you're seeing here a few examples of all of these that are dependent on different backgrounds. The color there is also speaking to the emotions that I'm feeling. The image that was very colorful um, and very saturated colors is a lot different from the images that's on the black background. You can also play, and that's kind of the last thing I'll say, you can also play on tone. Um, so we have in photography a gamut of tone that we call from cool tone to warm tone, um, and you'll see it on the next slide. Um, so the ones that are on um, the far, that would be your left, I think, on the screen, uh, you'll see they're a little bit bluer. 
which means that's what we call cool tones. And then the one that are on the right are a little bit yellower or warm. Um, and those tones also do exactly what the words say. They either make you feel warmth or they make you feel cooler. Um, and one thing to check in for that is uh, light. Usually when you're in the shade, you tend to be on the cooler side. And if you're in the bright sunlight, or especially if you're at sunset, you know, when we have those beautiful glowy sunset, then you're gonna be on the warmer side. Now, you might think, okay, great Lawrence, you made some really nice still lives, but I don't have backdrops. I don't have color backdrops that I can pull, you know, and bring down um, at all. Well, you'll see, this is actually all done using objects from my house. So this was my setup uh, right there. Uh, you have books that were used as backdrop uh, in two cases. And uh, you have my chair, which is exactly the one that I'm sitting on, which was used as a black backdrop. Um, and in the very, very back of the picture, you can see um, the bread and the cheese resting on the top of a, um, on the top of, a, a chest of drawers and my, my white wall. So really this is to show you that anything that you have in your house, whether it's furniture, a box, books, your clothes that you can like, you know, if you have a bright orange jacket, you could wrap it around the, the chair and really change the backdrop using those elements. So this is kind of the first challenge I'm gonna throw out there for you. I'm gonna give you now five minutes um, in, a, in just a little bit where you can go and find an object in your house and find the kind of setting you want to put it in and snap a picture. But before we do that, I want to check if there are any questions. Okay, are th if there are no question right now from the audience, um, I will let you give you five minutes to go and try it out. I'll also remain here on the call to answer any questions you might have in the process. Great, see you in five minutes. And just to answer one of the questions that came up in the, um, the chat feed, uh, if you're not seeing the images, if you came into the chat a little bit late, we did go over some of the ground rules. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is to pin the communities create uh, video feed, that way you'll see all of um, the images that Laurence is presenting. So that's the sort of uh, show feed. Um, so that's something that you want to follow. Let me see if there's any other notes that I can share with people who are just coming into the session. Uh, with the images that you take, you can um, place them in the chat if you want to share it with me and we can kind of go over it. Uh, you can keep it till Friday when we're going to have a watch party of all the images that you made, or you can also share it um, with the hashtag communities create. And I'll also definitely post to that. social media. Yeah, share them to social media. If you post them, uh, let us know where you've posted them. So if you're posting them on Instagram or on Twitter, use the communities create hashtag or communities create photography. We'll take a look um, if you let us know where to look and then we can, and then Laurence can take an, uh, a look at the images that you're making as you make them. So that's some of the ground rules I'll just go over again. Pin the communities, create video so that you know you're watching the host's video. Try the exercises yourself right now. You've got time to try some of these things out. Uh, use the chat and comment to ask questions. Everyone's doing a pretty good job of that right now. Uh, share your work on social media using communities create. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Uh, so, all right, looks like there's something over on Instagram, communities create, we'll go take a look. Uh, keep your microphone um, muted. You're gonna be muted by default. We'll unmute you if you have questions that you wanna ask. We are recording all of that audio. And uh, finally, you have the ability to control your own video feed. So thank you. And uh, I'm gonna go try things out myself. <laughs> So I'm going, uh, while we wait, I'm going into the, um, I'm, I'm searching that photo uh, on Instagram as we speak. So hopefully, get to see it soon. <laughs> I'm seeing, what I, I'm seeing right now is a great, if you can see it on my phone, um, <laughs> it's a, a, a very funny montage and collage of images uh, taken as a screenshot. Um, yeah, <laughs> the new ad for uh, Unico Black Beads.
So maybe take a couple more minutes. And as um, you kind of complete this task, uh, make sure you come back, gives us a, a thumbs up or a little like clap. You can use the reactions button on Zoom to let us know that you're back. I'm seeing an image. We've got about, we've got some images coming in. Thank you, Amelia, for sending. Ah, this makes me feel cozy. I'm seeing uh, Kimberly posted on Twitter. Thank you, Kimberly. Oh, <laughs> Rubik's Cube. That's great. That's a really good one. Very layered in um, what you can say through a Rubik's Cube. Um, yes, I love that. Okay. Well, um, please continue to share your images as I kind of go over the next uh, little bit of information about photography. Um, and Hopefully everybody is able to stream back towards the computer. I'm going to slowly get back into it. So people are hearing my voice and kind of knowing that um, we're uh, starting again after this uh, first little jam. Um, so hopefully that went well um, and that got some of your creativity going. Uh, know that you have the rest of the week also and the rest uh, you know, of the month and so to create, but um, definitely take these images as starting points for other ideas and continue moving with it throughout the week. And then by Friday, uh, we'll have our watch party with um, everything that you've shared. So still life is one thing, but it can still be very hard to convey certain emotions through still lives because objects are quite you know, inanimate and not the most expressive. And this is where portrait comes in and is very useful. We all know that this is how, as human, we communicate emotions with one another. We'll see how someone, you know, is, you know, what their posture is, what their facial expressions are, their gestures, and that'll give us a good chance, like good um, understanding of how they might be feeling. I have no poker face. Um, so my partner always tells me that, you know, he knows exactly the moment that I'm a little annoyed with him or things like, <laughs> or things like that. Um, so, you know, portraits are really great. Um, and uh, you can also use certain tools so that they're more than just, you know, it's not just about the posture or the facial expression, uh, but it's the whole image and how you took it that is conveyed that, conveying that emotion. I tried to do so. Um, and I, you know, decided one of the things I miss a lot, one of the things I long for um, is spending more times outdoor. So for kind of this portrait, um, I decided to create my own little forest. You'll see in the image uh, that's going to be shown, um, I moved my plants <laughs> around my apartment uh, so that I could nestle myself in between some of them um, and look a little bit like I was outdoors. Um, so the idea here was to communicate my longing for the outdoors. Uh, if you look closely at the image, you'll notice that you can see a little bit of an AC unit. You can see a little bit of my desk in the back because everything in that image is sharp. It has what we call a very, very large depth of field. From the front to the back, everything can be seen. Um, and so this can kind of create a little bit of actual confusion with the image um, because we see that it's indoors, um, there's distracting elements into it. So I thought, okay, I don't want everything to be sharp. I probably want things to be, you know, a little bit wistful, like fairy-like. Um, and therefore, I wanted to introduce blur. 
So what I did, I shifted the focus entirely um, so that the focus was only on the leaves kind of in the front um, and everything else was out of focus. And you're seeing that now. However, with something like this, um, didn't quite achieve that wistfulness I was looking for. Um, it's a little confusing, rather, <laughs> when you're looking at it. Uh, it might convey things like emotions more of feeling lost because you know everything's a blur and such. And that's not really exactly what I was going for. Um, so instead, um, what I decided to do was to go for um, what we call a very shallow depth of field. Uh, so I made sure that the focus was only on me and that you know everything around me, so the leads and the background were falling out of focus. How to do that? Um, essentially, depth of field is, is what happens when you have more than one plane on the image. So instead of having everything on the same plane, you'll have some that are in the foreground, some that are in the background, and some that are in the middle ground. And the more distanced your foregrounds are, your different planes are, this is when, when you pick your point of focus, what is outside of that point will become blurred. If everything is very close together, it will be harder to create these kind of blurs um, in the foregrounds or the backgrounds. This might be where you, if you know, you're using an iPhone and you have a tripod for it, you might want to use that. And the timer, you might want to use someone to help you out as well with that. Um, but those are certain tricks. Um, I also know that depending on the phone that you have, there is an actual um, kind of like depth of field focus sliders. Um, so I'm not going to go through everybody's you know, type of phone on how to do it, depending on the app you're using. Um, so if that's something that you're interested, uh, I've put in uh, kind of an additional resources um, list that you will be available at the end of this workshop where you can also go to get that information. Are there any questions so far? I know I can talk a little bit fast. Um, so I see that a few um, people are sharing some of their images uh, within the chat. So I will have a look at those while you're uh, working on this exercise. Um, so now your next challenge is to take the next five minutes and to create a portrait. Uh, so for that, think of the kind of an emotion you want to convey. You're going to want to think of a set like for the still lives but you're going to want to add that element of focus. Where are you going to put the focus? Is it going to be on you? Is it going to be on something else in the scene? Um, is it going to be sharp? Is it going to be blurry? How can that help convey your emotions? So I'll give you five minutes again for that. I'll use this opportunity to address one of the other tech questions that came up. Someone was having trouble pinning the community's create thumbnail. Um, and I think the reason was that she was having a hard time um, finding the thumbnail. So because there's so many participants, you may need to scroll through. The ones you're seeing on screen aren't all of the thumbnails of everyone who's present. So you'll see a, um, an arrow in a blue circle, regardless of which mode you're in. If you click that arrow, you'll be able to scroll through. And what you're looking for is the community's create thumbnail. Once you've tracked that down by scrolling through all the thumbnails that are on screen, you'll notice there's three little dots in the top right corner if you put your mouse over that thumbnail. And if you click on the drop down, you should see pin the video. Um, that's at least on a, on a desktop or laptop. Thank you, Ramona. Uh, I'm seeing some of the still lives. I'm just going to um, chat a little bit during that five minute while everybody's working on the portrait. Uh, really love the still life, Crystal, um, with both your mask and um, the plant in the background. A lot of kind of layered and complex uh, storytelling in between those two uh, elements there. Really, really enjoy that. Um, and Don, I both enjoyed your uh, uh, your montage with the <laughs> Unico um, speaks both to kind of like our current moment uh, where we're uh, all online and um, having to deal with some of the frictions that happen when we're, we're living online, as well as um, the, I think from what I'm seeing, it's uh, dried, it would be a dry fruits, flowers, chili peppers, <laughs> and the time also a lot to be said there. Um, I don't know about 
everyone on this call, but um, there's definitely a collapse of time happening uh, right now for a lot of us. Um, really great colors to uh, the color palette with the brick wall and the browns and the, the richness of the oranges in there. Pepper, thank you, Don, for that clarification. <laughs> oh. Take a couple more minutes for the portraits. I know it can be challenging. Portraits can be challenging. Um, some of us are great at selfies. Um, for others, it may be a little bit less of a everyday <laughs> occurrence. Um, you might have noticed from my portraits that I'm not the most comfortable in front of the camera. I prefer to be behind it. I'll give you a little bit more time. If there are any questions, don't hesitate to put them into the chat box um, at this moment as well. Great, okay, I'm, um, so yes, please share your portraits if you feel comfortable, um, either here uh, as well as uh, on social media using the Communities Create. Uh, I'm seeing uh, a few, so I'm seeing uh, Crystal sent one. Uh, wonderful, oh, beautiful Crystal. Um, and as well as Amelia sent one. <laughs> so let's see. Oh, I love the backdrop, um, Amelia, in, in your home. Um, I think there's a lot that you can do with that. Um, you will have to excuse me for just a second. Um, my cat is chewing on uh, the, the, the vase that's behind me. <laughs> so I'm just going to move that before we have a little bit of an accident. The subplot of today's uh, live stream. So the wonders of Zoom, she really wanted to, uh, to be part of this moment. And this is a great segue actually into uh, the next portion since so much of my life has revolved around my cat um, and documenting everything she does. Um, so, uh, you know, we have, so we've seen the still lives uh, and how objects can help us communicate emotions. We've seen portraits and how, you know, beyond our expressions or gestures, and our posture, uh, we can use uh, blurs and sh you know focus and depth of field to emphasize our messages. Um, and then another method to really convey what we've been feeling, what we've been going through all of these days, is a documentary mode, which is a lot more about looking at your everyday life and capturing moments from your everyday life. Um, mine started a little um, while back. In the first few days when we were um, asked to stay at home, um, I noticed my cat doing for the very first time, um, staring out the window. Um, oddly, it was never really something she did much of, uh, but as you'll see on the image that's gonna come up, um, she started you know, peering out the window very, very intently. And right away I related with that moment. I looked at it and I was like, this is how I'm feeling. I'm at the window. I feel like I'm part of the world, but I'm not really in it um, because I'm staying at home. Um, so that got me into this idea of documenting my everyday life uh, through my cat. So I'll show a few more images of what I've been doing um, the past few days and weeks. Um, so really paying attention to you know, where she is. Uh, you'll see my partner a little bit in there too. Kind of my daily, li daily life. What you'll notice in these images, aside from the fact that they're in black and white and not in color, um, they are very much, um, I pay a lot of attention to light and shadow and how the light travels through my space. Uh, in that bottom right image where you see uh, my cat lounging in um, the sunlight, very happy, 
I had to make sure that her face was in the sunlight because had her face been in the shadow, we wouldn't have gotten kind of the emotions that she was feeling. So that's one of the things I pay great attention to is how the two play together and how I can use them to create texture, um, to create a certain amount of contrast that speaks to how ambivalent, like that would be the key word, I think, about how I've been feeling this entire time is ambivalent. Uh, so you'll see a few more um, out there also. Uh, so different moments um, in the everyday life where I pay attention to light and shadow. So this means very much like throughout the day, as the sunlight streams through your apartment, you know, look at where it lands. Uh, if you have east facing windows, most likely you're going to have these like interesting moments of light and shadows in the morning as the sun rises. If you're facing west, on the other hand, if you have west facing windows, that means that those, that beautiful uh, play of light and shadow is mostly going to be at sunset. Um, so what I, I encourage you to do is to really pay attention to that. But in the meantime, even though right now, you know, we have kind of like a gray, gray sky, so not so much crazy lights and shadows coming in, you can start imagining some of these images. That's what I do quite a bit is I try to think ahead a little bit of the type of images I'd like to see, the type of scene I'd like to take, and then wait for the right moment uh, during the day. So that's what I'd like you to do for the kind of last challenge is to go around your space, think about a scene you'd like to capture, take you know your like location scouting image in a sense um, that you'll have, because then you can notice if there are things that you need to change. In the last image I'll share here, um, you'll see in the corner uh, my bottle of uh, Tide detergent, uh, which obviously I kind of wish I had moved uh, beforehand um, there. This is the moment where my partner, who's a frontline worker, comes home and my cat, you know, recognizes uh, his footstep as soon as he gets here. Um, and we're both so filled with anticipation when he comes home to hear about what kind of day he's had. Um, so that's why this picture was important to me, but I kind of wish I had cleaned it up a little bit so that we weren't distracted by what's happening in the background as much. So are there any questions? I'm seeing a lot of uh, pictures. Um, I have a question, Laurent. Yes, go for it. In terms of looking for shadows, um, and I know this is probably not the best time of day to be looking for them, but when you see them in black and white, it feels like shadows pop, but when you're not looking in black and white, when you're just looking at the space around you, how do you see, this is, seems like a vague question, but how do you see light when you're not a trained photographer, when you don't have that kind of trained eye like you have? A really good trick is to use your hand. So you can put your hand or, you know, or a, a you know, kind of black, white sheet of paper, um, wherever you think you want to look into, and you'll see that certain elements are going to be a little bit darker and certain elements are going to be a little lighter. Um, so right now, if I can kind of try, like if I move the, this great Unico <laughs> can beans in front of my hand, where when it becomes in front of like the source of light, my hand becomes, you know, darker and now it's lighter and darker and lighter. Might be a little hard because the computer is also adjusting the light. No, I see. That's great. <laughs> um, there's another question from Kimberly over here. Um, can we unmute Kimberly so she can ask? Hi. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask what is like the best way to capture photos at night? I'm currently on the other side of the world, so it's mm. pitch black outside. And I know there's like reflections with the lights from inside to the windows, but I'm wondering if you have any tips. Yeah, uh, photographing at night is a particular challenge, but what I love to do about it is to have, to really actually emphasize the fact that it's kind of like nighttime. So to not try to get kind of an even light across or get everything that's in the scene um, into the light, because that would require having, you know, the, the shutter open for a really long time. Uh, so instead, I will make sure that the element uh, that I want to photograph is like under the light. So like if you have um, some um, 
kind of uh, whether it's like desk lights or like floor lamps um, and you want to photograph an element, then just like a person or an object, just make sure that they're underneath that source of light and then everything around will be black. Um, and that can really actually help convey kind of uh, make very interesting images. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. Kimberly, out of curiosity, where are you? You say you're on the other side of the world. Uh, I'm in Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. So just left of China. <laughs> wow. So great to have you here. Yeah, I'm from Montreal though, originally. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, it's great to have you here. Thank you for joining. And yes, absolutely. Um, photographing at night can be um, can be a little tricky, but you can use uh, sources of light in your house to, to help with that. Um, and really focus on what's in, in the light and embrace the darkness. It's also a great reminder that we're taking submissions for, I mean, really the entire length of this project. You can always use the hashtag communities create photography. Um, but for this particular week, we're taking submissions up till Friday morning. So if you don't want to do it at night, you can wait till there's a little bit of light in the morning um, and continue to submit certainly any of these exercises that Laurence has done. Feel free to take the time and explore them. I know I'm going to as well. And I think it's amazing that we've got people from all over the world and it makes me want to see those images so, so badly. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm seeing a few uh, images uh, on the side, uh, mostly from uh, the portrait uh, attempt. Uh, so uh, really great job. Um, I think this one is um, by Mac. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's the full name, uh, but really great job at uh, kind of conveying both through the image that you chose, um, but also the backdrop there, um, a host of different feelings uh, within that. Um, and really interesting, um, other interesting uh, self-portrait and still life all into one uh, Don with the, the puzzle and the magnifying glasses. Um, really love the different planes into that one. Great. Well, how did the documentary go? Um, I think the five minutes are up. <laughs> Um, uh, so um, hopefully the documentary kind of also gave you some interesting ideas as to um, perhaps some elements of your everyday life um, that you'd love to capture at this moment, whether, you know, it's times uh, where you're relaxing um, or, you know, times where you're feeling more stressed. Um, those are both very good to record, like to keep a record. Oh, record of. Um, I also want to say, you know, there's this, there's an additional ability which I haven't covered to then manipulate your images in uh, post production. So whether it's using uh, different apps that are available on on uh, your phones or you know more involved software like Photoshop, by all means, feel free to do so as well. Um, I've also seen people in this time. Uh, you know, print out the images and write on them and then re-photograph them. All of that is, you know, added layers onto which you can kind of express yourself. So, you know, don't limit yourself to like the few little exercises that I've presented here. Feel very free to create and to photograph kind of um, with, uh, with your heart. Um, and yeah, send them to us uh, before uh, Friday. Um, I'm sure uh, Ramona is going to go through the best way to make sure that they get to us. Um, and yes, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm still able to take uh, a few questions too. Thanks, Laurence. That was a really wonderful workshop. I know as someone who studied photography in high school, went to film school for undergrad, uh, there's stuff that I learned in this workshop and it's really been a delight. I love the way you made the little sets. I love the way you work with color. I just think the tools that you've given people to be able to be so creative without leaving their homes right now are gonna be 
people are going to make use of them, I know, um, while we're in this social distancing mode. So it's really great. I'd love for people to um, do more than what they just did live. This was just the, the, the opportunity to just try it and, and sort of see how easy it is to communicate visually um, and how quickly it can be done, but to take the time and really reflect now and to really think, how are we feeling? And if we are creating this communal time capsule, what is it that we want to convey through images and to think through how we can do that with still life and how we can do that through portraiture and really how we can use light to do it. I know the reason I didn't go and try the documentary one is I was looking at more around my house that is so bright right now and I just thought, wait till the shadows set in a little bit later. Um, if you're posting your images, do it on any open public social media platforms. If you've got a private Facebook page, we're not going to be able to access them. But if it's Twitter, if it's Instagram, use the communities create hashtag or communities create photography, we'll find them. Um, there's uh, a few other pieces of um, housekeeping right now. We've got a watch party on Friday. If you want to get some feedback on your images from Laurence, we'll be compiling all the images that get submitted and taking a look and discussing all of them. That part's not live streamed. It's more like a little party than it is a live stream. So stay tuned for that information. Um, and thanks everyone for joining us as our first kickoff. I think it was great. It's amazing to see people participating. Um, sharing their images. It's been wonderful to see everyone's images. Um, and finally, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Diana again. We do have time for a bit of a debrief if you want to talk to her a little bit about how you're feeling, um, if there's anything that, you know, you're thinking through right now. We've also got um, some resources up on communitiescreate.ca slash resources. There's a list of mental health and well-being related resources that Diana and her team have put together. So that's available to you as well. Um, thanks again. Without further ado, I'm gonna pass the floor over to Diana. Thank you, Laurence. Thank you to Amelia and Sarah and the Transmedia Zone and the hosts at FCAD, Rana as well. Thanks everyone for hosting this first kickoff, work, kickoff workshop. Um, a reminder for everyone, next Monday is podcasting and there's a really wonderful workshop on podcasting. Same thing, easy, jumping right into it, making while you're participating um, and uh, same format. That's hosted by the Toronto Public Library. So I hope to see some of you there as well. Thank you everyone for joining. It was a pleasure. Looking forward to seeing your images. Hi everyone. Um, 